pattern that works comes from the fact that I began sewing my own clothes during lockdown. Uh, sewing offered me the pleasure of playing with color and with texture, letting me counter those uncountable days with finite projects and wrap myself in the kind of distraction that we all, we all need these days from, from the, everything that we can't control. The sculptor Louise Bourgeois said that the act of sewing is a process of emotional repair. And for me, that has been true. Now, you may know that text and textile have their same origin in the Latin for texere, to weave. And English is full of metaphors connecting sewing and weaving with storytelling and the construction of femininity sometimes. But that's an academic topic for another day. Um, today, I'd simply like to offer some advice on sewing your own clothing, uh, advice which may or may not apply to teaching, especially teaching in a pandemic. Now, when we were in distance learning, uh, I was working at my dining room table and half the table has laptop and you know the papers I need for, for prep. And then there's also kind of this receding tide of bits of cardboard and electronics and um, failed prototypes and examples for students and notes for lesson planning and maybe odd grocery list. And the other side of the table has a drift of fabric and patterns. And there's the sewing machine and scissors and thread. And as the days blurred into each other, I began to notice this ebb and flow from one side of the table to the other from sewing to prepping for class and teaching, back to sewing again, back to teaching. And I realized that I began to let my mind play with those connections. And I realized that I was learning certain things from sewing my own clothes. And so I'd like to share those with you today. First one is pay attention to what's actually there. Look at the material you're using, um, what's its texture? What's its color? How does it behave? Uh, if, if, if I've got a very stiff and structured fabric, it might be excellent for a jacket and it would be wildly uncomfortable if I made pajamas from it, right? And so pay attention to what's actually there and that will help you understand what you want to do. Now, another thing I've discovered is find a pattern that works. I have a favorite shirt pattern. I've, this one, I made it probably more than a dozen times. Do I have a dozen identical shirts? No, because I change the neck or cut it up the front, make it a jacket, lengthen it, it's a dress, leave the sleeves off altogether because it's a pattern that works and I, it supports me making different variations on it. It's a good structure that I can use and I can adapt to whatever the situation requires. So that's a pattern that works. And then the last thing that I keep telling myself is to try to become more of an imperfectionist. Now I'll say my sewing, I often say that it's far from good, but good from afar. Um, when I take a look at this shirt, for instance, you know, this sleeve is slightly longer than this one. And the hem has got a little lump in it, but you can't see that on Zoom and you probably couldn't see it in real life. And I'm learning not to tell you. So I wanna encourage you to be a little bit more of an imperfectionist in your work. Be a little kinder to yourself. Now, Arthur Ashe is supposed to have said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. I say supposed to have said because it's all over the internet and I can't find a source. But still, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. It aligns really well to these things I've learned from sewing. Start where you are, find, a, take a look at what you have exactly, what's there, what's in front of you. Use what you have, find a pattern that works and do what you can. Be a little more of an imperfectionist and see if you can be a little kinder to yourself. Because 
we're back in school these days and our roles and our time are a little more defined than they were before. Things are a little clearer cut, but I am still sewing. I am still thinking about these things and I am still engaging in the emotional repair that we all seem to need these days.